guys, it's Lindsay and welcome back to my channel. Today, I am hopping on the tier ranking train. Whoa, whoa! <laughs> I'm gonna be ranking all of the writing craft books that I have read so far. Now, I do have a craft book and review video where I read 10 craft books in nine weeks. It was a time. If you're looking for a more in-depth review, what each book is about, the pros and the cons and the comparisons, I think I'm gonna direct you towards that video because I think that will be a better introductory one. This one is going to be all about me. <laughs> this is personally how I feel about each of these individual books, what they were for me. I want you to watch the other video first because that one will help you decide if a book is right for you because we all need different things and are at different places with our craft and have read and absorbed different things at different times. If I put a book on one of the bottom tiers, it was bad for me, but that doesn't mean it would be bad for you. It could be exactly what you need is basically what I'm trying to get at. My friend Lizelle also did one of these videos recently. She ranked writing craft advice and it was such a fun video. I'm gonna link that down below too, so definitely go check her out. So let's just hop right in. Okay, so here we are on my screen and the first one up is Creating Character Arcs by K.M. Whalen. Now I am gonna put this one in my faves because this is, this is a fave. I really like Liked this one. It was self-published and I had never heard of it before and then a subscriber recommended it to me and I'm so glad that she did because for me it was exactly what I needed. It upheld some ideas about story craft that I already had and already knew about and that really meant a lot to me and helped me in my craft while at the same time making my characters and my story even more deep. So I love this one for me it's a fave. Next we have Story Genius by Lisa Crone. And this one's also a fave. I really like this one too. Now Lisa Crone is interesting. She's got two books on this list. She also has a Wired for Story down here which I'll rank later. But I really liked this book. This is a good book if you are just beginning to brainstorm outline and work on that first draft. However, it does have all of the beats and things like that, that Anatomy of Story and Save the Cat have. So you can be like on a third or fourth or 18th draft or whatever and still read this. To me, it's kind of like John Truby's Anatomy of Story, which y'all already know I was gonna put that in God tier, so we'll go ahead and put it up there. But Story Genius is basically anatomy of story if you can't handle John Truby, which I totally understand because anatomy of story isn't going to be perfect for everyone the way it's perfect for me. He's douchey and super arrogant and his tone is snide and smudge. <laughs> if you guys watch The Office, there's the arrogance and the smudge. Jim Halpert is smudge and arrogant. I think he means smug. Arrogance. But Story Genius hits almost all of the same points, not all of them, but almost all of them, and remains a little bit less smudge. While we're here, we'll talk about Anatomy of Story. That is, of course, God tier for me. It is my favorite writing craft book. I don't think that's much of a uh, surprise to anyone that's been around here a while. I just think it's the most in-depth craft book that you'll find. I think it's amazing. I think it's glorious. And I mean, John Truby wrote Shrek. <laughs> he wrote Sleepless in Seattle. Like these are amazing stories with great characters and like nuanced plots and like, huh, I just, I think he's incredible and I think he knows what he's talking about. And I know Laura Wrights is watching this video like, oh my gosh, let's see, shut up. <laughs> and like, I get it. A lot of people hate this book and rightfully so. And then we have Save the Cat writes a novel, which is everyone's favorite, I know, but it's going down here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to reiterate again, for me, this is where I would put it for me. If you have never read Save the Cat, I, I definitely still recommend it. I think it's a great beginner book. It's a great book too, if you're just starting out with craft, like read Save the Cat first and then read a bunch of others, just like you would with any other craft book. Um, but for me, it just did not work for me. The thing that is just so unforgiving about Save the Cat for me is there is this discourse about how the character arc and the story never even meet until like the midpoint and I'm just like every other craft book I've ever read says the exact opposite and like it's so stressful that it's teaching people to like do this. I think that your character arc and your plot should be so intertwined from page one that you can never tear them apart so I just don't agree with that and I really don't like that it kind of leaves you out in the middle of the ocean with act two. It doesn't really explain that very well. Story Genius and Anatomy of Story both do that way better. So that's why 
it's in the there's better out there. The redeeming qualities of this book though, because I, I will be nice, <laughs> is that I really love the uh, end chapters where it teaches you how to like write a query and a pitch or like a Twitter pitch blurb love that part and also where it breaks down each individual genre of story i think that's really cool and then we have probably the most popular which is stephen king's on writing and i'm putting it over here now i want to say i am doing this because this is for ranking writing craft book and on writing is not a writing craft book. It is like 100% or like 99.9% .9 a memoir. And if I was ranking memoirs, it would be up in God tier. But I'm not ranking memoirs. <laughs> I think that like the craft section of this book is like maybe three pages. And it's just Stephen King stopping in the middle of his story of his life to say, hey, don't overuse adverbs. And it's like, Thanks, King. Thanks. So it's a nah for me. Okay, and then we have the emotional craft of fiction. I'm putting this one in the good, not great. I like it. I don't love it. This is a really great book for learning how to pull at your audience's heartstrings, how to make a character arc that is emotional for the reader, a plot that is thrilling or heartbreaking or whatever. I, I think it's really good. Uh, it's, but it is, it is good. <laughs> it's just one of those books that I read and I highlighted a few spots and then I put it on my shelf and I don't really think about it too much after that. And then we have the emotional thesaurus. We're going to put it in the good, but not great. Again, this is just like a, a reference book and it's fine. It's good. It's just like one I flip through when I need it, but never really think about it otherwise. And then we have the writer's guide to character traits. And this is going up in the faves for me. This is a reference book too, uh, but I just really adore this one. So this was written by an actual psychiatrist and she just really understands people. And if you understand people, then you can write good characters. She goes through and gives you like uh, full spectrums of people of different different situations and life things oh I'm a writer I swear I'm good at words <laughs> but she teaches you the typical characteristics and traits of like a garbage truck driver and a celebrity and a serial killer like all of these people exist on a spectrum and you can see where your character falls and then what like atypical traits and hobbies and likes and dislikes and things like that that type of character would have and I just I find this actually pretty invaluable I usually read over it at least once before I start a new outline on a new novel and I just I really think it's great like even if you only read over it once in your life it'll make a difference because things stick with you <laughs> and then we have writing science fiction and fantasy for me I think I am going to put that one in the there's better out there. Uh, it's okay. I love the reference part of this book, particularly the anatomy of a castle, uh, how to use certain medieval weapons, regular dress that you wore in like, you know, the 15, 1600s, things like that is really great. But at the same time, I feel like I could just like Google search that and find it a lot quicker. There's just a lot of articles that you have to get through first until you get to the reference section of the book. And if you are a big history nerd and are interested in the uh, literally the history of science fiction and fantasy, I think this is great for you. But it just for me, it was just like I liked the reference everything else I just kind of skim read. Also Orson Scott Card uh like wrote half of this book which makes it just like a little bit a little bit more iffy for me and last but maybe not least <laughs> is wired for story this is again by lisa crone and i'm putting that one in the there's better out there as well i think that wired for story and the emotional craft of fiction are really really similar but the emotional craft of fiction just goes a smidgen deeper than wired for story so i always just kind of preferred that one which is why this one goes in the there's better out there <laughs> category for me so there you go that is how i would personally rank all of the writing craft books that i've read for for me I'm, I'm trying to make that with like a lot of exclamation points for me i hope that on writing means more for you and that's what you need or save the cat writes a novel maybe that's exactly what you need maybe you hated anatomy of story laura i know you did <laughs> and she would put it in the gnaw section and like that's totally fine these are just these are just how they were for me and my journey and the point that i'm at in my writing life so let me know down in the comments where you guys would 
individually rank these things on your own ranking list. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe or I guess unsubscribe if you're mad at me about the whole save the cat thing. <laughs> Anyways, I love you guys and I will see you in the next one.